So Ubisoft invited me to play four more hours of Immortals Phoenix Rising. And I thought I'd throw on my camera and show you some more gameplay from my session and give you kind of my final thoughts on the game before it comes out later this year. If you follow the channel, I posted a preview a couple weeks ago now, and I've played it again, and just like Watch Dogs Legion and Valhalla, this game just feels more polished. It feels like it's getting closer and closer to the final retail version, which is what I expected. So I got all of the story context this time on who Phoenix is and what's going on with the storyline. Basically, Typhon breaks free from the underworld and captures or gets rid of all of the heroes, all of the gods, except for Zeus. So now Prometheus the Titan and Zeus are scrambling to find like who's going to save the day and they have to resort to the mortal and that turns out to be Phoenix. So in these first couple of hours, you learn a lot more about Phoenix and how he gets his powers. So you get your magical wings of Daedalus, you get the sword of Achilles, you get the axe of Atalanta, you get the Heracles bracers, basically everything that makes Phoenix sort of powerful and godly. Notice how I said him or his. I actually made Phoenix a male this time because I got to customize my character. There's a lot of crazy color options, like for the eyes, for the hair. Uh, there's a couple faces, only four, I think. Nothing substantial in terms of customization, but that's not really what I was looking for with this game, so it didn't like disappoint me. I ended up going with this big, bushy, blonde beard and kind of the Greek, uh, I don't know, it's it's something that Kratos has over his eye, I believe, kind of like the, the war paint. So this is the look that I went for, a kind of a Greek mythological god. Like I said, Phoenix is mortal, and you kind of just shipwreck onto the Golden Isle, so it feels like it's almost fate that has brought Phoenix into this situation. And early on, you come across Hermes. He doesn't immediately reveal himself, but this is obviously a god who is recruiting you to take down Typhon and save Olympus. It's a pretty straightforward prologue. Like, it feels linear, although it's within an open world. But you get to a certain point in the game where you're given several different objectives, and you can kind of choose where you want to go from there. But in the end, your goal is to locate the missing gods that Typhon... I think either killed or like uh, banished from the realm and recover their essence. So you're looking for Athena, Ares, Hephaestus, and Aphrodite. These are very common gods. And I got the impression that you're maybe going to look for more later in the game, but these are just kind of the starter gods. In my demo, I started the Aphrodite quest line, but again, in the full game, it felt like I could do these in any order that I wanted to. I don't really want to get into specifics. I don't want to like spoil this story for you guys, but it eventually led me to the Hall of the Gods, which is Phoenix's sort of home base. This is where you get to spend all of those resources that you're spending time in the game collecting, and it's going to make you stronger. So there's no like classic leveling system in this game, no experience bars or anything like that. While this game does feel like an RPG in some ways, definitely not in this way. It's more of like an action adventure game where things that you're going out and earning, you spend those resources to make your person, your character stronger. So at the Hall of the Gods, you can upgrade your health, your stamina, you can upgrade how powerful your swords and axes are, maybe your bow. You can also upgrade your potions to add special effects that you didn't have before or just to boost what they already do. And then of course you can spend coins, which you receive by completing activities to unlock new skills and godly powers that really change the way combat works. Also, you can customize your character, your appearance. If you wanted to like switch genders, for example, change your voice or your hair, maybe give yourself crazy green hair or blue skin, you can do any of that once again after the start of the game. So you're not locked in. If you ever wanna like change your mind and look differently, you can do that here. Probably the coolest thing I found here was the heroic tasks board. This is where you get these random bonus objectives and it's very simple, like kill 10 animals, for example. And your reward for that is some resources that you can use to upgrade, of course. But what I liked about this is that you could take a lot of these all at once. It wasn't just one by one. So it made sense to just grab everything and then kind of keep that in the back of your mind while you're playing the main content. And then you can return and collect like a new weapon skin, which is completely unique. The final thing I'll say on the story is that this game is funny, or at least it's trying to be. Whether you think it's funny or not, obviously it's a subjective thing. It's not like rolling on the floor laughing funny, but it is like exhale deeply through nose funny. Prometheus and Zeus are narrating the entire game, like almost everything that you're doing, and they're joking constantly. The characters within the game know that they're in a game. It's very fourth wall breaking, and 
I appreciate that kind of humor personally. I know it's not for everyone, but it worked for me. So I'm sure a lot of you are wondering watching this video outside of the story, like what are you actually doing in this game? Obviously, you notice that this game shares a lot of surface level similarities with Breath of the Wild. It just does. But like I said in my first preview, I didn't find that to be a bad thing. This game is split evenly between exploration, puzzling, and combat. You're doing all three, kind of a mix of everything at all times. and. They feel distinctly unique to this game. This is not some Breath of the Wild clone. I know I've seen a lot of that since Immortals Phoenix Rising was revealed, but having played it twice for a total of eight hours, I just don't feel that at all. What really stood out to me is just how gorgeous, how beautiful this world is. It's very stylized and again, borrows some inspiration, you know, from Breath of the Wild. You can see it's there. Exploring is a big part of what you're doing in Immortals Phoenix Rising because Everywhere you see, there are landmarks that catch your eye. And the great thing is everything that you see, you can actually travel towards because it's an island. <laughs> so most of the time you're using your wings to glide around, you know, you're getting up high and then jumping off and gliding towards a location, or you're using a magical mount to ride along the ground and get where you're going. So my demo was restricted to the Valley of Eternal Springs, which compared to the first time I played Immortals, which was in the Hephaestus land, it was very kind of orange, and decrepit and kind of dead, which makes sense for that area. This is very like classic Greek mythology. You have a lot of marble, white stone structures, palaces, you know, kind of what you think of when you think of Greek. But I found so many cool locations in my short time with the game. First off, the Palace of Aphrodite was just this opulent, like ornate place that you would expect, you know, a palace to give off. But even cooler to me was this place called Gaia's Soul, which obviously Gaia, I believe, is the goddess of the earth, something like that. Um, it's not explained in the game. It's this really cool twisted tree in the center of the Valley of Eternal Springs. And underneath this area, I found this blue unicorn, which you can tame mounts in this game. That's not something I mentioned before, but I got a reindeer mount. But more importantly, I found this blue unicorn who had just three times the amount of stamina that my normal uh, reindeer mount had. So it felt really special, like stumbling upon that special thing and being like, wow, I have this mount now, I can use this thing. So I ended up climbing this tree, this Gaia tree, and at the very top there wasn't much except for these wind vortex tunnels, which I discovered is actually an unmarked sort of exploration puzzle platforming activity that led me to one of the dungeons in the game. Of course, I jumped in the dungeon and I'm sure this is something I wasn't supposed to find when I found it, but it was really difficult. I wasn't even able to complete the dungeon. So there is a little bit of level scaling going on in this game. I wouldn't say that there's none of it because I ran into it, but that wasn't a problem to me because yeah, I just wasn't strong enough. I needed to become stronger and then I would return back to this location. And fortunately, whenever you discover a dungeon in Immortals, it's marked on your map and you could just fast travel right back to it. But from discovering this location, you just get the feeling that there is a lot in this game. There's tons of secrets, things that aren't even explicitly marked on your map, not even labeled that you will find. So it really kind of piques that mystery inside of me of wanting to explore and uncover you know, things that might be hidden. Speaking of dungeons, Vaults of Tartarus are this game's version of a dungeon. And I played several of them. Um, I had played them in the first demo, but I got more of a variety this time around. I had to roll these balls, kind of like Super Monkey Ball. Do you guys remember that game? It was on Wii, and you have to kind of navigate through these obstacles using your bracers of Heracles. It's a combination of using air vents and timing to sort of guide these things to the pressure plate that you need in order to progress again. If you played any of the dungeons in Breath of the Wild, yeah, it's very similar in that way. In some of them, I had to guide my arrow in you know, like slow motion, similar to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, in order to hit a target that would activate a gate that would let me progress. In others, I had to defeat a couple enemies, maybe a boss, and do some timed platforming. Nothing that forces you to think too hard. It's not, th this stuff is not meant to like be a brain teaser or anything like that. Just a bit of puzzle platforming, which is something that I always love about games. Puzzle platforming, you know, if there's that in your game, sign me up. 
By far the most difficult and time consuming activity in Immortals is the constellation puzzles. You have to find these orbs scattered around one location and basically once you find these, you drop them in the correct slot on a grid that matches the little wall that shows you exactly what you're supposed to be forming, the constellation. But the thing is, you're not told where these orbs are by default. They're just in a general location. So you kind of have to figure it out for yourself, which is something that I like. And UB did tell me that this is just the default mode. You can actually go in the options and make the game reveal where these orbs are so you're not searching for them. But unlocking each of these orbs involves a mini puzzle in and of itself. So you're doing things like lighting brazers with arrows, you're knocking out hidden walls, you're solving physics puzzles. These are probably gonna be my favorite because again, it involves the most like figure it out yourself activity and kind of content in this game, which is again, something that I like. From all of these activities that I played, I found some really awesome weapons and armor, like really cool. The variety here, the armor sets, the weapon pieces, just the visual style and aesthetic were so cool to me. In gameplay, they don't feel very different. So I wouldn't go into Immortals Phoenix Rising thinking that you're collecting a ton of loot and all of that loot is gonna feel unique to one another. It's not something like Valhalla or insert any other RPG with a bunch of loot. But at the same time, they have different perk sets that allow you to kind of specialize how it functions, not how it functions, but how it'll help you in your play style. So if you like to use axes more, you can grab an axe that boot or an armor set that boosts your axe damage or something like that. Again, what I enjoyed most about finding these weapons was the skins. It's how they looked, which is funny because I usually am all about the stats. I don't care how stuff looks, but not in this game. There's lots of fun combinations, bright colors, unique designs. For example, I wanted to show you guys this boar's outfit where I had like a boar's head and the similar sort of, you know, armor for my Phoenix. It looks ridiculous, but it fits in with the rest of the game's aesthetic. It works. And I had a blast, you know, shooting arrows, running around with this boar's head. All right. We've talked all this time. We haven't talked about combat yet. So since this was the very beginning of the game, I didn't have most of the abilities that I had when I first played Immortals Phoenix Rising. So to me, I understand why, but to me it felt a little restricted because I didn't have what I had before. I understand this is the beginning of the game and like most games, this game slowly doles out its skills and abilities. Not slowly, honestly, like the first hour and a half, I had most of the bare bones skills, the things that you need to actually, you know, compete in combat, but it really shines when you get all of the pieces. And so that was towards the end of the demo. I was able to grab some more, you know, substantial abilities, like being able to pull myself at ranged enemies and being able to launch enemies in the air for air combos, stuff like that really expands. It gives you a lot of tools to use in combat, but at the same time, you're able to hurl rocks and trees at enemies. And strategically, it makes sense. Some enemies need to have their stun meter built up. So you have a couple of moments to just lay into them and get some real damage. You have those guided arrows. It makes sense to use those on harpies because time is slowed down. And then of course, you've got the perfect parry and perfect dodge mechanics. Once you're able to string all of this together, using your sword to build up stamina and spending it on godly powers, it just kind of gels together into a very arcadey combat hack and slash experience. And I had all of those powers that I wanted by the end. So I destroyed my enemies with Hephaestus's hammer and Ares wrath. I used that to launch them into the air and start my air combos. It's really a fun time when you're able to see all these moving parts and put them together. Now, towards the end of my demo, my demoist gave me a ton of resources. So I was able to go back to the Hall of the Gods and just boost my Phoenix up like several levels, like what would take probably a dozen hours to get to, maybe more. And I felt much, much more powerful in combat. Like it was no contest. However, it also made all of the enemies stronger. So there's a sort of level scaling where as you get more powerful, so do the enemies. Now, before I got this boost, I would go out into the world and most of the enemies had kind of a, a red skin, I wanna say. But then after the boost, they all appeared as blue and their nameplates were like silver. If you've ever played an MMO like WoW, for example, that means it's like a rare enemy or like a tougher enemy to defeat. But overall, I felt like I had the net positive advantage in that situation. So 
I invested all this stuff and I actually felt stronger. It's not like everyone else was at my level and the game felt the same as it did at the beginning. But it was in this section of my preview where I felt like I had the most fun because I found some really cool things. First off, I went to the Palace of Aphrodite and I found Electrion, which is a legendary rooster world boss. Yeah, you heard that right. And the rooster was just a pushover. I don't know why, uh, probably because it's a rooster. <laughs> but upon defeating it, I unlocked this really cool Phosphor skin, which is for your Phoenix. That's another ability that I had in the first preview. It was actually locked in this one because you don't unlock your Phoenix until after the section that I played in the demo. So that was really cool, but at the very end, I found probably the coolest thing in the demo, and it was in this rocky island that looks very ominous, that catches your eye, and it makes you think, oh, I wanna travel over there and see what that is. And I found an arena for Ozomeni, Ozomeni, Ozomeni? Whatever this is, it's a mythical harpy with the golden nameplate. Like this is the baddest of the bad in the entire game. This was a boss battle where this harpy had completely unique attacks and basically kicked my ass on normal, even with all of the power boosts that I got. Clearly this is like end game stuff. This is what you're gonna be doing once you've maxed out your character. So obviously I died, but this was right at the end of my demo. Like I had minutes left to play, so I was talking to my demoist and I was like, okay, I'm bumping the difficulty down to story level. I want to beat this thing and see what kind of prize I would get. And of course I did defeat it. It was kind of a pushover at that point on story difficulty. And my reward was this really cool wing skin. So these come out every time you glide or sprint and they were kind of dripping this blue ooze. And so, yeah, this felt rewarding to me. Like. I, I know some people would look at this and say, why don't you get a cool weapon or a cool armor piece? But to me, like cosmetic rewards felt rewarding because again, that was what I was looking for out of the loot. I was looking for really cool skins and I got one. I also recovered a mythical fragment and my demoist told me that there are four world mythical monsters that you have to defeat over the course of Immortals. This was one of them. If you collect all four of these fragments, you can combine them into a badass set of armor. So obviously, yeah, I can't wait to do that myself. Overall, Immortals, after this second preview, is shaping up to be a really fun game. Uh, it's kind of a shame for me personally that it's coming out right after Cyberpunk and Valhalla. Like I can't conceivably see myself picking up this game and playing it instead of those. And I think that's a lot of people. But at the same time, if you're looking for something that's, you know, more light and playful, that scratches that open world itch, but doesn't ask too much of you, especially in terms of time as well, I don't think this game is gonna be just endless like those games. You know, Immortals is the game that will do that. Again, not to take anything away from Odyssey and people that enjoy that game, you're entitled to your opinion, of course, but I still get the feeling that this is the game that Ubisoft Quebec wanted to make all along. This is their vision brought to life. Immortals is quirky, it's gorgeous. It offers like arcade style hack and slash combat with some very light RPG elements sprinkled in there. But it plays like an exploration action adventure game. And if that's what you're looking for, it feels like Immortals hits that right on the numbers. Anyways, when I do get to it, and I, I will, I cannot wait to play the full thing later this year uh, on next gen. It's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be gorgeous. And that will do it for my final preview of Immortals Phoenix Rising. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this is a different kind of format that you're used to, so let me know what you think about this looser kind of on-camera thing. Um, of course, welcome your feedback in the comment section below. Make sure you're subbed if you haven't already for more previews, lots more Valhalla, some more watchdogs, all kinds of fun stuff coming to the channel very soon. And of course, big thanks to my YouTube members, Grass, David, Kamal, Casey, Matthew, Spyro, JVO, John, Lil Man, Brock, Tia, Level42, and Nos for supporting the channel. If you wanna support me further, click the join button below this video. In exchange for your support, you'll unlock custom badges and a Motes to use in chat. So check the link in the description for more information. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.